Welcome to the Ultimate Sports Blog Podcast. This is the 2018 NFL Predictions Podcast, where I give you all my predictions for the season, and I'll give you my playoff picks, division standings, Super Bowl winner, award winners, surprise players, breakout players, flop players, rookies to keep an eye on, and a lot more. Let's get going. Let's start with the AFC East. In first place with a record of 12 and 4, I have the New England Patriots. Second place with a record of 6 and 10, the Buffalo Bills. And in a last place tie, I put the Jets at 5 and 11, as well as the Miami Dolphins. The Patriots will be the team to be in this division as long as Tom Brady and Bilicek still reside. Their offense will be good, although they made some changes. I expect Sonny Bichel to see a lot of playing time running the ball to go with James White. Rex Burkhead, and Jeremy Hill. Julian Edelman is back from a torn ACL, although he's suspended the first couple games of the season due to the drug policy, and Brady also has Chris Hogan and Rob Gronkowski to throw to. They did lose Nate Solder on the offensive line, although it, the unit isn't bad without him with guys like Shaq Mason and Trent Brown, and Brown will be replacing Solder as the starting left tackle. The Pats' defense is their Achilles heel, although they have some solid pass rushers with Trey Fowler's and Dante Hightower. Their secondary lost Malcolm Butler, but still has Patrick Sean, Devin McCourty, and Stephen Gilmore. The Buffalo Bills will take a step back after making the playoffs a season ago. Josh Allen should start over Nate Peterman, and that offense won't be good enough, although LaShawn McCoy is still a solid running back. Kelvin Benjamin and Andre Holmes are their starters at receiver, and Charles Clay is their tight end. Their offensive line isn't great after the trading of Cordy Glenn. Their defense will keep them in games with a solid defensive line led by Jerry Hughes and Kyle Williams. Linebacker Tremaine Edmonds was a steal in the first round, and the secondary will be solid with Mika Hyde and Tredavious White. The New York Jets are a team in rebuilding mode as well. Sam Darnold will be their starting quarterback, but his supporting cast is among the worst in the league. Isaiah Crowell and Bilal Powell are the running backs, and we'll see most of the traction. Robbie Anderson and Jermaine Curser are the projected starting receivers, and they don't know who their starting tight end will be. Their offensive line isn't good either, although free agent adds James Carpenter and Calvin Beecham should help. The defense will be the strength of their team with a solid defensive line led by Leonard Williams, Avery Williamson, Jordan Jenkins, and Deron Lee, who are good linebackers, I mean the last three guys I mentioned. And the secondary should be better with the addition of Tremaine Johnson. The Miami Dolphins are another team that's in rebuilding mode. Ryan Tannehill returns from a torn ACL and his supporting cast isn't great either, although Kenyon Drake is coming off a breakout season and Frank Gore was an offseason pickup. Danny Amendola, Kenny Stills, and Devontae Parker are the receiving core and they don't know who their tight end is either. They do have a nice offensive line led by Laramie Tunsil. Their pass rush isn't bad either, led by Cameron Wake and Robert Quinn. Their secondary will be better with the first-round pick, Minka Fitzpatrick, joining Rashad Jones. The AFC North. I have the Pittsburgh Steelers winning the division at 11-5. Cincinnati Bengals in second place at 8-8. The Baltimore Ravens in third place at 6-10. And and the Cleveland Browns in last at 4-12. The Pittsburgh Steelers are yet again the team to be in this division. Ben Roethlisberger is still around, and this will probably be Le'Veon Bell's final season as a Steeler, so this may be the end of their window. Antonio Brown is still around, and Juju Smith-Schuster is a good number two receiver. Their offensive line is among the best in the game, led by Marquise Pouncey and David DeCastro. Their pass roster is decent, led by Cam Hayward, but their defense will miss Ryan Shazier, although T.J. Watt, Shined as a rookie. Their secondary is solid, led by Joe Hayden and Artie Burns. The Cincinnati Bengals are looking to bounce back from a disappointing season. Andy Dalton is still around, and I expect his supporting cast to improve. Joe Mixon is a solid running back, and A.J. Green is still around, and I expect John Ross to make a leap. Tyler Eifert is one of the more underrated tight ends in the league. Their offensive line should be improved with the trading of Cordy Glenn and the drafting of Billy Price. Their front seven is solid with Tino Atkins, Carlos Dunlap, and Vontez Burfecht, although Burfecht will be suspended to start the season. 
And they have a solid secondary, too, led by Drake Kirkpatrick and William Jackson the third. The Baltimore Ravens are looking to bounce back from a disappointing season. Joe Flacco is still around, and I don't love his offense, though. Alex Collins is the starting running back, and Willie Steen and Michael Crabtree are projecting started receivers. Their offensive line is not great, but I do like Ronnie Stanley, who is their first-round pick from a couple of years ago. Their pass rush is still the strength of their team, led by Terrell Suggs. Their secondary isn't bad with guys like Eric Weddle and Jimmy Smith. The Cleveland Browns are a team that badly wants to improve. Baker Mayfield should start over Tyrod Taylor, but I doubt it. Carlos Hyde will be a nice addition at running back to the team, as well as Jarvis Landry at receiver. The offensive line should be improved with the drafting of Austin Corbett. Their pass rush will be better with the expected growth from Miles Garrett. Their secondary will be better with the trading for Demarius Randall and the drafting of Denzel Ward. The AFC South. I have the Houston Texans winning the division at 10-6. and six. I have the Tennessee Titans also finishing at 10-6, and six, but I have them as a wild card team. Third place, I have the Jacksonville Jaguars at 9-7. and seven. And in last, I have the Indianapolis Colts at 5-11. and 11. The Houston Texans are my pick to win the AFC South with the return of Deshaun Watson coming off his ACL tear. Lamar Miller is still a serviceable running back in this league, and DeAndre Hopkins is one of the top receivers in the game. The offensive line is among the worst in football. Their defense is the strength of their team, and their front seven is among the league's best in J.J. Watt, Davion Clowney, and Whitney Merciless. Their secondary will be better with the addition of Tyron Matthew. The Tennessee Titans are a team that looks to build on last year's success, although they have a new head coach in Mike Norvell. Marcus Mariota is a quarterback that I expect to be a lot better under Norvell and with Derrick Henry in the backfield along with Deion Lewis. Rashawn Matthews, Corey Davis, and Delaney Walker are solid core and tight end options for Mariota. Their offensive line is very solid, led by pro bowler Taylor Lewan. The pass rush is pretty good, led by Jarrell Casey. The secondary should be better with the addition of Malcolm Butler. The Jacksonville Jaguars are coming off an incredible season and look to build on it. Blake Bortles got paid by the team, but I'm still not convinced that he's the long-term answer. Leonard Fournette is one of the elite running backs in this game. Their receivers are not that great, but I do like D.D. Westbrook and rookie D.J. Shark. Austin Safarian Jenkins is a nice addition at tight end. The offensive line will be improved with the signing of Andrew Norwell. Their front seven is among the best in the league, led by Calais Campbell and Yannick Nagui. Their secondary is among the best in the league, as well, led by Jalen Ramsey. The Indianapolis Colts have a new head coach in Frank Reich and finally get Andrew Luck back from injury. Luck does not have a good supporting cast, though, as Marlon Back is their projected starting running back, although T.Y. Hilton is a solid receiver. The offensive line is not bad, actually, with rookie Quentin Nelson, Anthony Costanzo, and Ryan Kelly. Their defense will still be among the worst in the game. Their best pass rusher could very well be Jabal Sheard. Former first-round pick Malik Hooker has to improve this season in the secondary. AFC West. I have the Los Angeles Chargers winning the division at 11-5. and I have the Kansas City Chiefs coming in second place at 10-6 and and receiving a wild-card spot. I have the Denver Broncos in third at 7-9 and and the Oakland Raiders in last at 5-11. and The Los Angeles Chargers probably should have won this division a year ago, but bad luck in close games derailed them. Phillip Rivers still plays at a high level and has a lot of talent around him. Melvin Gordon is one of the better running backs in the game, and Keenan Allen is one of the more underrated receivers in the game. Tight end Hunter Henry is out for the season due to a torn ACL. They'll miss him, and they bring back veteran Antonio Gates. The offensive line is solid, too, led by Russell Okung. Their pass rush is among the best in the league, led by Joey Bosa and Melvin Ingram. Their secondary is solid, too, despite the torn ACL of Jason Verrett, and they'll rely heavily on Casey Hayward and rookie Derwin James. The Kansas City Chiefs are a team that people are mixed on. I'm high on Patrick Mahomes, who has some potential and a very good sport supporting cast. Kareem Hunt was a great rookie last year, and Tyree Kill is a very good deep threat. Travis Kelsey is one of the more underrated and better tight ends in the league. 
the offensive line's pretty good with guys like Mitchell Schwartz and former first round, first overall pick Eric Fisher. Their pass rush isn't what it used to be a few years ago, but it's still solid, led by the great Justin Houston. Their secondary is solid too, led by Eric Berry and trade acquisition Kendall Fuller. The Denver Broncos look to bounce back from a very disappointing season from a year ago under second-year coach Vance Joseph. Case Keenum should be an upgrade over Trevor Simeon. Rookie running back Royce Freeman will have an impact, and Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders are two solid receivers. Their offensive line should be good with Ronald Leary back and healthy, along with former first-round pick Garrett Bowles. Their pass rush is the strength of their team, led by Von Miller and first-round pick Bradley Chubb. Their secondary solid two, led by Chris Harris and Darian Stewart. The Oakland Raiders are in John Gruden's first season coaching in a decade and his second stint with the Oakland Raiders. Derek Carr looks healthy and has a nice supporting cast around him. Marshawn Lynch and Doug Martin are both past their primes but are serviceable running backs. Amari Cooper and Jordy Nelson are solid wideouts, and Jared Cook is a good tight end. Their offensive line is very good, led by Donald Penn, Rodney Houston, and Kalechi Osamoli. Their pass rush is terrible now after the trading of Khalil Mack. Who's their best pass rusher? Is it Bruce Irvin, the former West Virginia star, former Seattle Seahawks first-rounder? Their secondary has some former first-rounders there, too, with Carl Joseph and Gary on Conley. The NFC. We'll start with the NFC East. In first place, I have the Philadelphia Eagles at 11-5. and Second place, I have the Dallas Cowboys at 8-8. Eight and eight. Third place, I have the New York Giants at 7-9. and nine. Last place, the Washington Redskins at 6-10. and 10. The reigning champion Philadelphia Eagles are still the team to beat in this division, even though Carson Wentz is not back yet, and Nick Foles will start week one. Jay Ajayi and Darren Sproles are a solid running back combo, and they're just loaded at that position too. Don't forget about Wendell Smallwood and Corey Coleman. They're two solid backs as well. Alshon Jeffrey proved to be a great ad last year to the offense, and Nelson Aguilar was solid last year, too. Zach Ertz is one of the better tight ends in the game. The offensive line is among the best in the league, led by Jason Peters, Jason Kelsey, and Lane Johnson. Their pass rush is a good one, too, led by Fletcher Cox. Their secondary ain't bad either, led by Malcolm Jenkins and Jalen Mills. The Dallas Cowboys are a team that people feel take a step back this season due to offseason losses and injury concerns. Dak Prescott didn't have a great year last year, and he looks to rebound. But outside of Ezekiel Elliott, he doesn't have much. Allen Burks, Terrence Williams, and Cole Beasley are the projected starters at receiver, and they lost Jason Witten at tight end. The offensive line is dealing with injuries to Zach Martin, Travis Frederick, and Lyle Collins, respectively, and they cannot afford to lose Tyron Smith, God forbid, if he got hurt too. Their pass rush has some young, talented guys in Demarcus Lawrence and Sean Lee. Their secondary has some talent, too, like Byron Jones and Chidobe Azui, but they need to make strides if they want to be among the contenders in the NFC. The New York Giants looked the rebound from a disastrous season a year ago. Eli Manning is still around after they opted to draft Saquon Barkley over one of the quarterbacks, and Barkley is a transcendent talent who is a heavy favorite for Offensive Rookie of the Year. Odell Beckham Jr. is back after coming off a leg injury, Evan Ingram was solid last year as a rookie at tight end. Their offensive line should be improved with second rounder Will Hernandez and free agent pickup Nate Solder. Their pass rush is a question right now with the health of Olivier Vernon and the trading of Jason Pierre Paul. New trade acquisition Alec Ogletree needs to step it up at the linebacker position. Eli Apple is the key to their secondary and he has to improve or else that unit is in major trouble. I should say that defense is in trouble if he doesn't improve. That guy is facing a make-or-break season. The Washington Redskins have undergone some changes. Alex Smith replaces Kirk Cousins at quarterback, and after they lost rookie Darius Geis for the season due to a torn ACL, they signed Adrian Peterson. Josh Doxton, Jamison Crowder, and Paul Richardson are their starters at receiver, and Jordan Reed is a solid tight end. Their offensive line is very good, led by Trent Williams and Brandon Scherf. Their pass rush has some talent with Jonathan Allen and Ryan Kerrigan. I don't love their secondary, and I don't think Josh Norman is the same guy as he was when he was on the Carolina Panthers. The NFC North. First place, I have the Minnesota Vikings at 11-5. Second place, I have the Green Bay Packers at 9-7. and 
Third place, I have the Chicago Bears at 6 and 10. Fourth place, I have the Detroit Lions also at 6 and 10. The Minnesota Vikings are the team to beat in this division thanks to a loaded roster all around. Kirk Cousins is a quarterback upgrade over Case Keenum. Dalvin Cook is back from a torn ACL and he should have an impact running the ball. Adam Thielen and Stephon Diggs are a very good receiving duo. Kyle Rudolph is one of the more underrated tight ends in the league. The offensive line is not that great, but has some solid guys like Pat Eflin and Riley Reef. Their pass rush is the strength of the team led by Everson Griffin, Daniel Hunter, and Linval Joseph. And don't sleep on Anthony Barr and Eric Hendricks, who are also solid members of their front seven. The secondary is solid too, led by Harrison Smith and Xavier Rhodes. The Green Bay Packers get Aaron Rodgers back from a collarbone injury and expect to bounce back from a disappointing season from a year ago. Jamal Williams and Ty Montgomery have shown flashes in the past running the ball. Randall Cobb and Devontae Adams are solid receivers, although I feel they'll miss Jordy Nelson. Jimmy Graham is a tight end upgrade, but my fear is that he's a player in decline. Their offensive line has some good players in David Bakatari and Brian Balaga. Their pass rush should be better with Muhammad Wilkerson joining the crew along the go with Clay Matthews. Their secondary is banking on guys like HaHa Clinton Dix and Kevin King to improve their play. The Chicago Bears are a team that's looking to improve under new head coach Matt Nagy. Mitch Trubisky's development is the biggest key to this team's improvement. Jordan Howard and Tariq Cohen are a good running back combination, and the addition of Allen Robinson at receiver is significant, as well as the drafting of Anthony Miller. The offensive line is still... Not great outside of Kyle Long. Their front seven will be significantly better with the addition of Khalil Mack to go with some of their younger players. Their secondary has some talent too with guys like Kyle Fulmer, Eddie Jackson, and Adrian Amos. The Detroit Lions quietly went 9-7 and a year ago but have a new head coach in Matt Patricia and many folks, as do I, expect them to regress. Matthew Stafford is still one of the better statistical quarterbacks in the game, despite not having much around him. LeGarrette Blount and Theo Riddick will get most of the running back reps, although I won't sleep on rookie Carrion Johnson. Golden Tate and Marvin Jones are slated to start at receivers. The offensive line should be better with r- rookie Frank Ragno joining Taylor Decker. Their pass rush isn't great outside of Ziggy Ansa. The secondary isn't bad, though, with Darius Slay and Glover Quinn. The NFC South. This is arguably the best division in the league with three legitimate teams. Carolina Panthers have winning the division at 12-4. and four. Second, I have New Orleans Saints 10-6 and six with a wild card. Third, Atlanta Falcons 10-6 and six with a wild card. Fourth place, Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 4-12. and 12. The division has three legit Super Bowl contenders, and I like the Carolina Panthers to win the division. Cam Newton is one of the more underappreciated quarterbacks in the game. I expect a big breakout season for Christian McCaffrey, who will bring a different dimension to this offense. Devin Funches has shown flashes, and Ricky DJ Moore will have a big impact as well. Greg Goldson is one of the more underrated tight ends in the league. The offensive line loses Andrew Noel, but Trey Turner and Ryan Khalil are good linemen. Their pass rush is among the league's best, led by Luke Keekley. Their secondary isn't great, although I do like their young corner, James Bradbury. The New Orleans Saints won the division a year ago, and they'll be good again this season. Drew Brees is still playing at a high level, and Alvin Kamara is great. And brought a new dimension to this offense that they didn't have before. And don't forget, Mark Ingram will be suspended the first four games of the season. Michael Thomas and Ted Ginn Jr. are the top receivers on the roster. The offensive line is solid, led by Max Unger and Ryan Ramchek. Their pass rush is actually solid, led by Cameron Jordan. The secondary is on the rise, led by Marshawn Lattimore and Marcus Williams. The Atlanta Falcons are the third contender from this division. Matt Ryan is still playing at a high level, and Devontae Freeman is a very good running back. Rookie Calvin Ridley joins Julio Jones and Mohamed Sanu, the former great receiving trio. The offensive line is solid, led by Alex Mack and Jake Matthews. Their pass rush isn't too shabby, led by Vic Beasley. Their secondary isn't bad either, led by Keanu Neal and Desmond Trufant. 
the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to be awful, and head coach Derek Cutter is on the hot seat. Jameis Winston is suspended to start the season, so Ryan Fitzpatrick will start the first three games. Rookie Ronald Jones couldn't even win the starting running back job, apparently, over Peyton Barber. The receivers aren't bad with Mike Evans and Deshaun Jackson, and neither are their tight ends with O.J. Howard and Cameron Brait. Their offensive line is not great, although I do like Ali Marpet. Their pass rush looks to improve with the additions of Jason Pierre-Paul and Vinnie Curry. Their secondary is among the worst in the league, and their best defensive back could very well be veteran Chris Conti. The NFC West. I have the Los Angeles Rams winning the division at 12-4. and four. Second place, I have the Seattle Seahawks at 8-8. Eight and eight. Third place, I have the San Francisco 49ers at 7-9. and nine. And in last place, I have the Arizona Cardinals at 6-10. and 10. The Los Angeles Rams are the team to beat in this division and could represent the conference in the Super Bowl. Jared Goff looks to build on his breakout season from a year ago, as well as Todd Gurley. Brandon Cooks will be a great addition to this offense, and Cooper Cup and Robert Woods were big for this team a season ago. The offensive line is solid, too, led by Andrew Whitworth. Their front seven is phenomenal, led by Aaron Donald and Nagama Ginsu. And their secondary has some great additions to it with Marcus Peters and Akeem Tlaib. The Seattle Seahawks are a team entering a bit of a transition, although Russell Wilson is still a great quarterback. Ricky Richard Penny didn't even win the starting running back job over Chris Carson. Doug Baldwin and Tyler Lockett are not bad receivers. Their offensive line is among the worst in football, so Wilson better be prepared. Their pass rush is not great anymore, although Bobby Wagner is still around. Their secondary isn't the same as it used to be. Earl Thomas finally is back reporting to Seahawks camp. And Shaquille Griffin looks to build on his rookie season. The San Francisco 49ers are a team many folks have high expectations for, thanks to having Jimmy Garoppolo for a full season. Garoppolo's supporting cast is not great, especially now that Jarek McKinnon is out for the season with the torn ACL, so Alfred Morris should start at running back for them now. Pierre Garçon and Marquise Goodman are their starting receivers. The offensive line should improve with the drafting of Mike McGlinchey and the signing of Weston Richburg. The pass rush has some young talent with guys like Solomon Thomas and DeForest Buckner. Their secondary should improve with the addition of Richard Sherman, although he may not be the same guy as he was a few years ago. The Arizona Cardinals do have some talent and have a new coach in Steve Wilkes. Josh Rosen should start at quarterback, but it looks like Sam Bradford will be their starter. David Johnson is back after missing most of the year with a wrist injury. Larry Fitzgerald is still around, and rookie Christian Kirk will have an impact. Tight end Ricky Seals-Jones had a nice season a year ago as well. The offensive line should be better with the addition of Justin Pugh. Their pass rush is solid too, led by Chandler Jones. The secondary will be very good, led by Patrick Peterson and Buda Baker. NFL playoffs, wild card. Six-seeded Titans against three-seeded Chargers from the AFC. Fun game between these two talented teams. I like that Chargers pass rush to get to Marcus Mariota to lead them to the next round, so I have the Chargers there. Five-seeded Kansas City Chiefs against four-seeded Houston Texans out of the AFC. Fun game featuring two young quarterbacks in Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson. I like Watson's Texans in that pass rush of the Davy and Clowney and J.J. Watt to get to Mahomes. The call here is the Texans. NFC wild cards. Six-seeded Falcons against three-seeded Eagles. Rematch of last season's NFL divisional round with Wentz back healthy. Give me the Eagles. That's your pick to move on. Five-seeded New Orleans Saints against the four-seeded Minnesota Vikings. Rematch of last season's Minneapolis Miracle game. Should be a good one. I like the Vikes this time around, too. The pick is the Vikings. Division round. AFC, three-seeded Chargers against two-seeded Steelers. This should be a super fun game between these two veteran quarterbacks and Phillip Rivers and Ben Roethlisberger, respectively. Here's where the Chargers will miss Jason Verrett as Roethlisberger throws on their secondary to lead them to the AFC title game for the second time in three years. The pick there is the Steelers. 
Four-seeded Texans and one-seeded Patriots. This would be a fun game, and these two teams ironically face off on Sunday in Foxborough, too. I really love the Texans and that pass rush to get to Tom Brady and for Deshaun Watson to make plays with his arm and his feet to lead the Texans to the AFC title game for the first time in franchise history. So give me the Texans there. NFC, three-seeded Eagles against two-seeded Panthers. This should be a fun matchup between these two talented squads. I like the Eagles here on the road to advance to their second straight NFC title game thanks to Carson Wentz making plays and their defense getting stopped. So the pick there is the Eagles. Four-seeded Minnesota Vikings against the one-seeded Los Angeles Rams. Two of the most talented teams in the sport we have here. The difference in this game is the Rams front seven to get to the Minnesota Vikings offensive line, which I think is the weakest part of their team, to advance the Rams to the NFC title game and their first playoff win in Los Angeles since they moved back. So the pick there is the Rams. Championship round, AFC, four-seeded Houston Texans against the two-seeded Pittsburgh Steelers. This should be a fun matchup between these two teams. I like the idea of the Texans' pass rush getting to Big Ben and Watson making throws and plays with his feet as well. And for the Texans to be a surprise representative in the Super Bowl. So the pick there is the Texans. NFC title game, three-seeded Philadelphia Eagles against the one-seeded Los Angeles Rams. This should be a fun championship game between two of the league's most talented teams and the two picks that went one and two in the 2016 NFL Draft with Wentz and Jared Goff. This is such a hard call, but I like Goff and the Rams here with Todd Gurley and that defense stepping up too to go to the big game. So give me the Rams here over the reigning champion Eagles. Super Bowl 53, AFC four-seeded Houston Texans against the NFC one-seeded Los Angeles Rams. This would be a fun Super Bowl. The last few years, we've seen an unexpected Super Bowl rep, and I'm taking my chance with the Texans and their roster being fully healthy. The Sean Watson against the Rams pass rush will be fun, but the Texans' offensive line is suspect, and the Rams' pass rush, as we know, is excellent, and that's the difference here as the Rams will win the Lombardi Trophy for the first time in 17 years. So the pick there is the Los Angeles Rams. I'm going to call my shot now. Super Bowl MVP, Todd Gurley. All right. Awards. This is my award choices for the season. I'm going to start with the MVP, and I'm going to go with the Sean Watts of the Houston Texans. So many candidates for this award. I'm going to take a long shot here with Watson, who's coming off a of torn ACL, as we all know, and we'll be back with a vengeance. He'll light up opposing defenses with his passing and running ability and help lead the Texans to big things this season. My runner-up is Tom Brady of the New England Patriots. Offensive player of the year, Todd Gurley, Los Angeles Rams. Gurley emerged as one of the top running backs in the league a year ago, and he'll lead the Rams offense to one of the best in football. I believe he'll take home this award a second straight season. Runner-up, Antonio Brown, Pittsburgh Steelers. Defensive player of the year, Aaron Donald, Los Angeles Rams. Yes, another Ram, but Donald is the most dominant defensive player in the game right now, leading a defense that's championship caliber. I expect him to take home this award for the second straight season. Runner-up, Joey Bosa, Los Angeles Chargers. Offensive rookie of the year, Saquon Barkley, New York Giants. This was the easiest choice of the awards. Barkley is a transcendent talent that will make good defenses look bad and will possibly extend Eli Manning's Hall of Fame career a couple more seasons. Runner-up, Sam Darnold, New York Jets. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Bradley Chubb, Denver Broncos. Chubb was the best defensive player drafted this past spring, and he playing alongside Von Miller will be a joy to watch. He will be a building block for John Elway's team going forward. Runner-up, Derwin James, Los Angeles Chargers. Coach of the Year, Bill O'Brien, Houston Texans. O'Brien has a talented roster on his hands and has great players coming back from injury. I expect him to be motivated this season, and he could very well be coaching for his job. And yes, I have the Texans in the Super Bowl, so that could be another reason why I have O'Brien winning this award too. Although I have them as a four seed in the AFC, but a lot of folks think that 
Jacksonville is the team to beat in that division, and rightfully so because they made the AFC title game a year ago. But don't sleep on these Houston Texans. And the runner-up, Bill Belichick, New England Patriots. Comeback player of the year, Watson. Same reasons why I mentioned him for MVP. Runner-up, Aaron Rodgers, Green Bay Packers. Now I'm going to do my bold predictions for every team for the 2018 season. Going ABC order here, Arizona Cardinals. Sam Bradford starts the most games for them. I expect him to get the majority starts of the season. When he's healthy, he plays good quarterback. If he struggles, expect him to go to Josh Rosen. Atlanta Falcons. Vic Beasley, top 10 in sacks. One of the better pass rushers in the game. Young guy. I expect him to have a good season. Baltimore Ravens. The team parts ways with Jim Harbaugh after the season. I don't know if that means he's going to get fired or if they quote-unquote mutually agree to part ways. So that's a prediction for the season. Buffalo Bills. Josh Allen is starting before week five. Nate Peterman's the starter. They traded A.J. McCarron away to Oakland. And I expect Allen to be in the lineup before week five. The Carolina Panthers. Christian McCaffrey over 1,500 all-purpose yards. Yes, I said it. I think McCaffrey is the breakout star in the league this year. I think he's special. He did not have the rookie season I thought he'd have. Although he came on late in the season, I expect him to make a jump this year. Cincinnati Bengals. Andy Dalton throws for more passing yards and touchdown passes than Dak Prescott. I've seen a lot of folks in the media compare these two quarterbacks, and I think Dalton has a better supporting cast than Prescott, so I expect that to happen. The Cleveland Browns. Baker Mayfield starts more games than Tyrod Taylor. Yes, that's bold, but I think that will end up being the case as the season goes on, whether Taylor gets hurt or plays poorly. The Dallas Cowboys, Jason Garrett fired at some point, whether it's during or after the season. I'm going to say it's after. Denver Broncos, Vance Joseph fired after the season. I don't think that this team will finish above 500, so I expect Joseph and Garrett to lose their jobs, respectively. Detroit Lions, Matthew Stafford under 5,000 passing yards. Stafford tends to go over that mark, but I think this year he goes under. Green Bay, Mike McCarthy finally fired. I think McCarthy should have lost his job last year, but he had the Aaron Rodgers injury excuse built in. But I see this team going 9-7, and seven, missing out on a playoff spot, and that would cost McCarthy his job. Houston Texans, I mentioned this one before, Deshaun Watson wins MVP. I really think he's going to come back with a vengeance and shred defenses around the league, and not only with his throwing ability, but his running ability as well. Indianapolis Colts, T.Y. Hilton top 15 in receiving yards. With Andrew Luck back, I think Hilton's production goes up. Jacksonville Jaguars, Calais Campbell top 5 in sacks. Campbell was in play for Defensive Player of the Year a year ago. I expect him to be the same this year. So I have him finishing in the top 5 somewhere in sacks. The Kansas City Chiefs, Pat Mahomes throws for more yards and more touchdown passes than Alex Smith. Mahomes has a better supporting cast than Smith, especially now that Smith lost his starting running back for the season. So I expect Mahomes to outplay Alex Smith this season. The Los Angeles Chargers. Joey Bosa leads the NFL in sacks. I think that was an easy prediction to make. Los Angeles Rams. Todd Gurley leads the league in rushing. That was an easy one to make as well. The Miami Dolphins. Adam Gase fired. I do not expect Adam Gase to be back with the Miami Dolphins in 2019. He had a good first season, but mediocre last year, and could be another mediocre or bad season this upcoming season. And that's an impatient ownership there in Miami, too. Minnesota Vikings. Dalvin Cook, top 10 in rushing yards. This is bold considering that he's coming off a torn ACL, but I expect him to have a big impact in the Vikings' offense. The New England Patriots. 
This will be the first time since the 2012 season where the team is not in the AFC title game. Very hard prediction to make, but it's a ballsy one. As I mentioned before in the podcast, I have the Houston Texans over the Pittsburgh Steelers in the AFC title game. So that would make New England not in the AFC title game. New Orleans Saints. Marshawn Lattimore leads the NFL in interceptions. Bold call because there's so many good corners in the league and safeties as well. New York Giants. Saquon Barkley wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. That's easy. New York Jets. Todd Bowles fired. I do not think the Jets will have a winning season, which will lead to the firing of Todd Bowles. The Oakland Raiders will finish in last place in the AFC West. Most folks expect the Broncos to finish in last. Not so fast. I think the Raiders are a mess right now, and they'll finish in last. The Philadelphia Eagles. Carson Wentz will be back this month. I don't know when, but it's a matter of when, not if. And I expect Wentz to be back and play at a high level. The Pittsburgh Steelers. Le'Veon Bell back before week four. As we know that he's not playing... This week it was just announced, so my prediction here is that I expect him to be back before week four. San Francisco 49ers, Richard Sherman looks like a shell of himself. I like Richard Sherman as a football player. He brings a lot of energy and enthusiasm, but he's a player that's aging, and I... Not sure if he's still an elite player or not, and I'm guessing he's not. The Seattle Seahawks, Pete Carroll keeps his job despite hot seat rumors. A lot of people, I think, feel that Pete Carroll is coaching for his job this year, considering that they missed the playoffs last year. So I'm going to go on a limb and say Carroll keeps his job despite people speculating about his future all season. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Dirk Cutter, first coach fired. I think this is a slam dunk pick. The Bucs have a hard schedule. So I wouldn't be shocked at all if Cutter is fired early in the season. The Tennessee Titans, Marcus Mariota, top 10 in passing yards. This is bold. I think he will thrive under the new head coach and a new offensive coordinator. So I expect Marcus Mariota to have a career year. Washington Redskins, Jay Gruden fired. I picked the Redskins to finish in last place in the NFC East with a record of 6-10, and 10, so that could very well get Jay Gruden fired. Miscellaneous predictions. I have 10 miscellaneous predictions to throw out there. The first one being that the same six NFC playoff teams from last year make it again this year. I don't know if you guys all noticed that when I gave out my predictions for the NFC and how every team was going to do in that conference. But I do have the same six playoff teams, except the one difference is that I have Carolina winning the NFC South instead of New Orleans, and I have all the seedings different too. Because last year, Philly was the one seed, the two seed was Minnesota, the three seed was New Orleans, the four seed was the Rams, the five seed was the Falcons, and the sixth seed was Carolina. But this upcoming season, as I said in my predictions, I have the Rams as the one seed, the Panthers as the two seed, the Eagles as your three, Minnesota as your four, I have New Orleans five, and Atlanta six. My second miscellaneous prediction. More than two coaches fired during the season. I already said that I think Dirk Cutter will lose his job. He'll be the first one gone. And the other two could very well be Hugh Jackson and maybe Adam Gase. Maybe Todd Bowles. Maybe Vance Joseph if things go poorly in Denver. Maybe Jay Gruden of the Redskins. Maybe even Jason Garrett if things go south in Jerry World with the Cowboys. Maybe if the Houston Texans are a complete flop. Maybe it's Bill O'Brien. But I highly doubt it will be Bill O'Brien. If I had to make a guess who the other two are, I'd say it's Adam Gase and Hugh Jackson to go with Dirk Cutter. 
My third miscellaneous prediction, not standing for the national anthem will be an issue again. I have a feeling that the networks are going to catch somebody standing for the anthem or there's going to be a fan in the stands spotting it on the field and posting it on social media where everybody's going to be sharing it. So I think not standing for the anthem will be an issue again. Fourth miscellaneous prediction. Multiple games will be decided on bad calls. That's been the case the last couple years. We've had games decided on bad calls. The one that stands out for me was last year when the Patriots playing the Steelers in Pittsburgh. When the Patriots scored a touchdown where it really wasn't a touchdown because the receiver bobbled the ball on the ground. The helmet rule will be a factor. That is my fifth miscellaneous prediction. I really do think it's going to be a huge factor, and you'll have folks chatting about it on Monday mornings. My sixth miscellaneous prediction. Josh Allen will have more starts than Baker Mayfield and Josh Rosen combined. This is because I think that Josh Allen could start 14 games. Baker Mayfield might start nine games. And Josh Rosen could very well start two games. So there you go. 9 plus 2 is 11. And I said I think Josh Allen could start between 13 and 14 games. So there you go. My seventh one. Less than 10 overtime games. This is because I've noticed this in the league. The one that stands out to me was Jack Del Rio with the Raiders going for two. I believe it was against Atlanta, if I'm not mistaken, a few years ago. With Derek Carr and company, they went for two and they got it. They could have tied the game the fourth overtime, but no, instead they went for two. It might have been even in New Orleans. I knew it was in a dome where they pulled that off, and then they came away with the win. You're going to see more teams going for two-point conversions and going for it on fourth downs instead of kicking a game-tying field goal or a game-tying extra point. And some of that also has to do with teams having poor kickers. My eighth miscellaneous prediction, three or more flexed prime time games. Every year we see some teams flop that were supposed to be a contender. And it wouldn't be shocking if the league decided to to flex some games. Like if the Oakland Raiders have a late prime time game of the year, I'd expect that to be flexed. I'm talking about NBC, not ESPN or Fox, because... Thursday Night Football and ESPN don't have a right for flexing. NBC does because that's the Sunday night game. So I think NBC will flex three games or more. So that's pretty bold because it's usually one or two a year, but I think it's going to be three or more. My ninth miscellaneous prediction. Ten or more players with 2,000 plus yards from scrimmage. This is a ballsy call because there's a lot of running backs that catch balls from the backfield too. Le'Veon Bell's a good one, but he might not even be playing the first couple weeks, so he might not even exceed 2,000. So I could see Christian McCaffrey doing it, Dalvin Cook, Ezekiel Elliott, Saquon Barkley, Alvin Kamara, I wouldn't rule out Todd Gurley. I also wouldn't rule out Darren Sproles from Philadelphia. Dion Lewis from Tennessee. Leonard Fournette of Jacksonville. And another one to keep an eye on, although I highly doubt it, is Lamar Miller of Houston. That's an interesting call right there. Kenyon Drake's another player to keep an eye on. Tariq Cohen of the Chicago Bears. Maybe even Ty Montgomery from the Green Bay Packers. That's a good one. I'd definitely roll a Ty Montgomery there. Oh, and uh, Devontae Freeman's another one that could do it. So it's going to be some of those guys, 10 of those guys, or maybe all those guys I mentioned. And that's including Bell if he's back by week two. And last but not least of the miscellaneous predictions, there will be random games postponed due to weather. 
This happens every year. Last year, week one, Bucks Dolphins was postponed. I remember Giants Vikings was postponed one year because the roof collapsed. I remember the Eagles postponed the game due to snow. These situations happen every year. So I expect it to happen again this year. Next. I'm going to predict the 2018 All-Pro team. First team, quarterback, Deshaun Watson. Running back, Todd Gurley. The flex, Christian McCaffrey. Wide receivers, Odell Beckham Jr. and Antonio Brown. Tight end, Zach Ertz. Left tackle, Taylor Luan. Left guard, Andrew Norwell. Center, Jason Kelsey. Right guard, David DeCastro. Right tackle, Mitchell Schwartz. Defensive end, Everson Griffin. Defensive tackle, Aaron Donald. Defensive tackle, Fletcher Cox. Defensive end, Joey Bosa. Outside linebacker, Von Miller. Middle linebackers, Luke Keekley and Bobby Wagner. Outside linebacker, Anthony Barr. Cornerbacks, Mashawn Lattimore and Jalen Ramsey. Free safety, Harrison Smith. Strong safety, Landon Collins. Kicker, Greg Zerline. Punter, Brett Kern. Kick and punt returner, Farrell Cooper. Special teams, Butta Baker. Second team, quarterback, Tom Brady. Running back, Ezekiel Elliott. Flex, Alvin Kamara. Wide receivers, DeAndre Hopkins and Julio Jones. Tight end, Rob Gronkowski. Left tackle, Tyron Smith. Left guard, Kalechi Osemley. Center, Marquise Pouncey. Right guard, Trey Turner. Right tackle, Lane Johnson. Defensive ends, Chandler Jones and Calais Campbell. Defensive tackles, Linval Joseph and the Dominican Sioux. Outside linebackers, Jadavian Clowney and Telvin Smith. Inside linebackers, C.J. Mosley. Cornerbacks, Xavier Rose and Chris Harris. Free safety, Kevin Byard. And strong safety, Malcolm Jenkins. Kicker, Justin Tucker. Punter, Johnny Hecker. Returner, Tyler Lockett. Special teams, Matthew Slater. The all-rookie team. Quarterback, Sam Darnold. Running backs, Saquon Barkley and Ronald Jones. Wide receivers, Calvin Ridley and DJ Moore. Tight end, Mike Gesicki. Tackles, Mike McGlinchey and Colton Miller. Guards, Quinton Nelson and Will Hernandez. Center, Billy Price. Defensive ends, Bradley Chubb and Sam Hubbard. Defensive tackles, Deron Payne and Vitavea. Linebackers, Harold Landry, Tremaine Edmonds, and Lorenzo Carter. Cornerbacks, Denzel Ward and Mike Hughes. And safeties, Derwin James and Minka Fitzpatrick. Now I'm going to give out my picks for each team's best rookies. Arizona Cardinals, Christian Kirk. Atlanta Falcons, Calvin Ridley. Baltimore Ravens, Hayden Hurst. Buffalo Bills, Tremaine Edmonds. Carolina Panthers, DJ Moore. Chicago Bears, Anthony Miller. Cincinnati Bengals, Billy Price. Cleveland Browns, Denzel Ward. Dallas Cowboys, Michael Gallup. Denver Broncos, Bradley Chubb. Detroit Lions, Kerryon Johnson. Green Bay Packers, Aquamius St. Brown. Houston, Jordan Akins. Indianapolis Colts, Quentin Nelson, Jacksonville Jaguars, DJ Shark, Kansas City Chiefs, Armani Watts, Los Angeles Chargers, Derwin James, Los Angeles Rams, Joseph Noteboom, Miami Dolphins, Minka Fitzpatrick, Minnesota Vikings, Mike Hughes, New England Patriots, Sonny Michelle, New Orleans Saints, Traquan Smith, New York Giants, Saquon Barkley, New York Jets, Sam Darnold, Oakland Raiders, Colton Miller, Philadelphia Eagles, Dallas Goder, Pittsburgh Steelers, James Washington, San Francisco 49ers, Mike McGlinchey, Seattle Seahawks, Rashad Penny, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Ronald Jones, Tennessee Titans, Harold Landry, Washington Redskins, Deron Payne. 
Now I'm going to give out my picks to be the NFL breakout players for every team. Non-rookies, by the way. Arizona Cardinals, Hassan Reddick, the linebacker. Atlanta Falcons, Takarist McKinley, the defensive lineman. Baltimore Ravens, Marlon Humphrey, the cornerback. Buffalo Bills, Deion Dawkins, the offensive lineman. Carolina Panthers, Christian McCaffrey, that's a duh. Chicago Bears, Mitch Trubisky. Cincinnati Bengals, John Ross, he's a wide receiver. Cleveland Browns, Miles Garrett. Dallas Cowboys, Jalon Smith. He's a linebacker that got hurt a few years back with Notre Dame. He's pretty much back from that injury, and he's shown some promise throughout training camp and in the preseason. Denver Broncos, Garrett Bowles, the offensive lineman. Detroit Lions, Kenny Galladay, the wide receiver. Green Bay Packers, Kevin King, the corner. Houston Texans, Zach Cunningham, the linebacker. Indianapolis Colts, Malik Hooker, safety. Jacksonville Jaguars, D.D. Westbrook, the wide receiver. Kansas City Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes. Los Angeles Chargers, Mike Williams, who was a top 10 pick in the 2017 draft, the wideout from Clemson. Los Angeles Rams, Rob Havenstein, the offensive tackle. Miami Dolphins, Kenyon Drake, I expect him to make another leap this year. Minnesota Vikings, Dalvin Cook, that's a little bit too easy. Here's a bonus pick. Trey Waynes, the, I believe he's a fourth year man now. He's a defensive back. New England Patriots, Trent Brown. He's the man that's supposed to replace Nate Solder on that offensive line. I expect him to have a good impact. New Orleans Saints, Marcus Williams, the defensive back that had the misplay in the Minneapolis Miracle game. I expect him to be motivated this season to prove people that he's a good player. New York Giants, Delvin Tomlinson. He's a defensive lineman, second-year player from Alabama. New York Jets, Jamal Adams. He was their first-round pick last year, the safety from LSU. Oakland Raiders, Carl Joseph from West Virginia. He's a safety who's in his, I believe, third season now. Philadelphia Eagles, Derek Barnett. He was their first-round pick in 2017. He's a edge rusher. Pittsburgh Steelers, James Conner. This is too easy now, especially with Le'Veon Bell missing week one and perhaps missing the first few weeks. I expect Conner to have a big season rushing the football. San Francisco 49ers, the Forrest Buckner, the defensive lineman. Seattle Seahawks, Jerron Reed, another defensive lineman. Tampa Bay Bucks, O.J. Howard. Had some moments last year. I think he's going to end up being a good tight end in this league. Tennessee Titans, Corey Davis. Wide out from Western Michigan, who really didn't have a good rookie season. I expect him to make a year or two jump. And the Washington Redskins, Jonathan Allen, the defensive lineman from Alabama. And last, I'm going to do NFL team flop players. Some of these have rookies on this list and others have veterans. Some of them are young players who are in make or break years. Some of them have just recently gotten paid. So it's a mix of guys on this list. Arizona Cardinals, Robert Nicomdici. He was drafted a few years ago. Defensive lineman hasn't really done much. He had high hopes, but he looks like a bust. Atlanta Falcons. Jake Matthews has a bit of a bust reputation. He hasn't really played up to a lottery pick. And he was just paid in the offseason, and I don't like when guys get paid too often, especially if you really haven't proved anything. And Matthews hasn't even been to a Pro Bowl either. Baltimore Ravens. Brandon Carr. Just a veteran defensive back who was paid last year, but I'm not high on Brandon Carr. Buffalo Bills, Vontae Davis, 
who's a veteran who's a bit older now. Carolina Panthers, C.J. Anderson. I do not think he's going to see a, a lot of playing time. Christian McCaffrey's the best running back on the roster by a mile. I like C.J. Anderson on the Broncos, but I just don't love the fit here with the Panthers. Unless if Carolina's trying to copycat New Orleans with the two-horse running back thing. Chicago Bears, Roquan Smith. He's been dealing with injuries throughout the preseason. He was their first-round pick this year. I think he's going to be a solid player, but pump the brakes hold just a little bit because he's been dealing with some injuries. Cincinnati Bengals, Vontez Burfecht suspended the start of the year. He's a guy that's getting a little bit older. Cleveland Browns, Baker Mayfield, and I have this with an asterisk because we'll see how many games he starts. I don't think he was the best quarterback taken from this draft. That's why... I picked him as a flop for the Browns, and they'll wish they picked Sam Darnold, even though Darnold has a terrible supporting cast. Meanwhile, Mayfield has a much better supporting cast than Darnold. Dallas Cowboys. Tavon Austin. They converted him from wide receiver to running back. I don't know if that's going to go over well. Denver Broncos. Case Keenum came over in free agency. I'm just fearful that He will not be the same guy that he was a year ago. Detroit Lions, Eli Harold. He's a guy that they acquired in a trade from the San Francisco 49ers that really hasn't panned out. The Green Bay Packers, Jimmy Graham. I just don't think he's the same player that he was in New Orleans, and everybody's acting like he's a top three tight end in the league. No, he's not a top three tight end in the league. The best three tight ends in the NFL are Rob Gronkowski, Zach Ertz, and Travis Kelsey. If I had to rank the tight ends, Jimmy Graham's not even in the top three. Maybe not even in the top five, because you could argue some other guys should be ahead of Jimmy Graham on that list. Houston Texans, Nick Martin. He's an offensive lineman that they used the second-round pick on a few years back. He really hasn't done much. Indianapolis Colts, Christine Michael. He's their projected starting running back. And... I'm just not a fan of him, and he had high hopes in Seattle, and I do not think he'll reach his potential. Jacksonville Jaguars, Blake Bortles, he was just paid, and he is somebody that was on a team that made it to the AFC title game last year, but I just don't think he's an elite quarterback. Kansas City Chiefs, Cam Irving, somebody who... Didn't really pan out with the Browns and now is on the Chiefs. I just don't think he's a very good offensive lineman. Los Angeles Chargers. Antonio Gates. They recently just re-signed him due to the fact that Hunter Henry's out for the year. He didn't see any training camp or preseason action, so I don't expect Gates to have a big season. Los Angeles Rams. Dominique Easley. He's a player that really is a solid player, but I just don't think he's as good as people make him out to be. Miami Dolphins, Frank Gore. This was easy. Gore is an aging running back on the wrong side of 30. He probably shouldn't even be in the league. Minnesota Vikings, Laquan Treadwell, somebody that didn't pan out for them as a high draft pick. He's, what, their number three receiver? That would make sense because he's obviously behind Adam Thielen and Stephon Diggs on that depth chart. But I just thought that he was just overhyped when he was drafted and really hadn't panned out to what the Vikings thought. New England Patriots. Corderell Patterson, former Viking. Somebody that is known for... Being electric in special teams play, although I've seen him fumble in big spots way too much. New Orleans Saints, Patrick Robinson, a veteran defensive back in the league who's bounced around a lot. New York Giants, this one's easy too, kind of like Frank Gore. Jonathan Stewart, aging running back on the wrong side of 30. He's not even going to see a lot of playing time. Saquon Barkley's going to be on the field all the time. Jonathan Stewart looked awful in the preseason. 
he is bound to be a flop in New York. New York Jets. Talk about getting paid like Jonathan Stewart did. Tremaine Johnson. I think he's a good player, but I don't think he's worth what he got from the Jets. Oakland Raiders. Marshawn Lynch. Not the same player he was four or five years ago. That's all you need to know. And boy, I was tempted to put John Gruden and make this uh, player and coaches flop. But this is a player's flop, and uh, I probably shouldn't do that to somebody that I respected in the uh, sports business. But my question with Gruden is, has the game caught up to him? That's my John Gruden flop case, but it's only year one. You just traded away your best player. Marshawn Lynch, like I said, is past his prime. I don't even think that he's even going to be scoring a lot of touchdowns for them either. The Philadelphia Eagles, Nick Foles. That Super Bowl run was magnificent by Foles, but he's going to regress, and fans are going to be calling for Carson wants to come back early, and that's why I think he'll be back this month. I think full struggles, and the Eagles rush Carson Wentz back. Pittsburgh Steelers, Bud Dupree, somebody that they drafted a few years ago, hasn't really panned out. San Francisco 49ers, Richard Sherman, another ex-Seahawk on the list, going to a team in the Bay Area like Marshawn Lynch. Richard Sherman's another guy that's aging and somebody that I don't think is the player he used to be. Seattle Seahawks. Jermaine Afidi. Boy, that was a blown pick. That He's a bust, man. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Jameis Winston. I just think that the Bucs are going to have a terrible season. Winston's already suspended. And I really think that the Buccaneers might just clean house. And the pressure's on Jameis, and I really think that he won't have that great of a season. Tennessee Titans, Malcolm Butler just got paid, and I, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of when you get paid and kind of just relax, especially out of that Belichick Brady cocoon in New England. Yeah. Washington Redskins, Adrian Peterson, another washed-up running back. Except he's in the category with Marshawn Lynch rather than Jonathan Stewart and Frank Gore in terms of he can still give you something, but he's past his prime. That's it for the Mega NFL Predictions Podcast. I'll be back tomorrow with my regular podcast. Hope you guys have a great day.